morning. Well, yeah, it was a bit tight for uh, for time, but I'm starting early. You're not uh, you're not slipping behind. I'm I'm starting three minutes early. Um, I've just come from the NPIA transition board, where where uh, where uh, well the, indeed the National Crime Agency Oversight Board, which is overseeing the transition of, of national functions. Um, I'll probably be quite quick if I can, because a lot of what I would, uh, would, would normally say, I guess the Minister said at a strategic level, it's my job to try and help the service convert some of that strategic level stuff into, uh, into tactical delivery, but I don't want to depress you unduly by repeating the, uh, the, the, the fairly uh, sobering financial picture which faces policing. Um, but, uh, but just a, a sort of funneling in from the strategic to the tactical. Um, and uh, I guess the strategic position is that in the last financial year, the nation spent around £698 billion, um, and it had coming in around £548 billion. Um, and uh, I've tried living that way uh, throughout my university career. Um, and it was fine, I had a super time, but the problem is you, there does come a time of uh, financial reckoning. Um, and a, the good news for me was at the end of my university career I had a job and, and the kind of economic situation changed considerably in my favour but um, the nation's finances didn't have the same bailout waiting, uh, waiting for us at the end of that financial year. So if you're in a position where for every five you're spending £1.25 is servicing debt then you're, uh, you're in problem, in, in, a, in a difficult situation. Not least if you're not actually even eating into the debt, you're just servicing the interest of it. So that's the context, and it takes you funnel that right the way down from that uh, 548 uh, billion income and, and, and uh, 698 billion spend down to policing, which, uh, depending on what you count, costs somewhere between 13 and 14 billion a year, um, and you've got to do something about it. And it's clear that uh, there was a time when Policing would have been one of those services that would be uh, alongside uh, what's now your know, health and international development that would receive a special form of ring fencing protection. Uh, it's clear that those days are gone, and that was made crystal clear in spending review. The Home Secretary and Police Minister did what they could to take us down from the opening negotiating position, which was that policing would lose 25% of central grants, and they beat that down through hard negotiation with the Treasury down to a position where policing uh, would lose 20% uh, of central grant, but that still means a couple of billion pounds. And of course, it impacts on you differently in different places. Uh, so if you're policing an area like Northumbria, central grant amounts to a huge proportion of your budget. 90%, 88% of the cash in Northumbria comes from central grant. So a 25% cut in that takes something approaching, to something around 20% out of your budget. If, in contrast, you police uh, the uh, the, the Surrey County, then only half of Surrey's funding comes from central grant, so therefore a 25% cut in central grant is actually like a 12, 12.5% cut in the overall budget to the force. Um, if I get boring, just kind of start putting thumbs down and I'll tell you some jokes instead, but you, know, you are here to, uh, to, to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> Back of the net. Um, Right, so, so that's where we are, and um, I guess our collective responsibility and, uh, and my job as the boss of a, of a technical, technical central agency is to try and do what we can collectively to take the money out of policing in as intelligent a way as we, as we can. And uh, the Minister has, uh, has no doubt given you um, a, a summary of the speech he gave to City Forum on the 21st of January, where he said, well, you can bank the 1.15... Uh, 1.15 billion that's been articulated by Her Majesty's Inspector of Constabulary, and then you can do three broadly equal chunks of 350 million on levelling up, 350 million on pay, and 350 or 380 million on <coughs> ISIS and procurement. And the bit that I'm trying to help with is the ISIS and procurement. Um, with this, as with, with all of the things that, uh, that, that are about taking intelligent money out of policing, you know, this is not the Greenfield site. You know, we, we weren't a load of stupid numpties who'd never thought of any of this before, who suddenly had a, a dawning realisation uh, at the beginning of uh, the last financial year that we ought to get a little bit more efficient. Um, and so we're now at the point where we really are squeezing tiny margins here. Um, and other than perhaps in IT, which I shall come to in a second. But in terms of the normal procurement, um, look at this magnificent uh, 
police shirt that I'm wearing, supplied to me by Thames Valley Police Stores Department. Uh, it cost, I noticed, when the, uh, the invoice came through for it the other week, £4.99. Uh, a bargain, I think we'll all agree. But uh, you're not going to shave too much out of, uh, out of your, uh, your budgetary spend if your starting point is 4 99 on shirts. And it's rather simplistic and facile to pretend that <coughs> just by improving the way we shop, we're going to bail policing out of a £2.2 .2 billion uh, procurement hole, uh, £2.2 .2 billion found hole in the budget. But nevertheless, you know, that there are sensible things we, we can do and we should procure collectively and we should look intelligently at the, the opportunities, some of which I think you'll be hearing about today. Um, I, I, I'm so tempted to steal Ian Blacker's thunder uh, with, with one or two of the... Uh, this, oh, thank you. <coughs> One or two of the numbers that are available to us if, if we were to outsource and, and, uh, and if we were to nationalise some functions. Um, but I will uh, we'll perhaps take some of that in, in questions. But I'll give you a quick case study around police IT if I can. Um, at the start of the time that, that I became interested in this, and I accept the spend has gone down from, uh, from the high point that I'm about to describe, uh, police were spending around £1.4 billion each year on goods and IT. Uh, on, on comms and IT, <coughs> the, uh, the equivalent of around £5,500, £6,000 per head in, in policing, roughly double what you might expect to spend for a comparable sort of technical field-based occupation such as our own. Um, and one of the reasons we're so expensive is because we do things in 43 different parallel ways. So I remember being in the southeast uh, as an ACC in Thames Valley Police as we procured the Guardian Northgate system for our crime and intelligence system. Around 12 months after, uh, our neighbours in Hampshire had procured the niche system for their crime and intelligence system. And around four months before, our friends in Surrey procured the Memex system as their crime and intelligence system. And uh, Sussex, I forget uh, who they went with, but I think it might have been ABM. But there you have four forces in a tiny geographical area procuring, with all the expense of procurement, four very different systems to do one very similar thing in an ever so slightly different way. Two drawbacks with that. The first is the cost of procuring it and, and having it and upgrading it and training it and developing it, etc., etc., etc. And second, the operational cost of reduced interoperability. And it's one of the central propositions of the ISIS program, that's the Information Systems Improvement Strategy, that you can actually both improve your interoperability and therefore your service and save money at the same time. And every pound that uh, boring technical people like me and uh, the people at the MPIA save you in that way is a pound that you don't need to take off the front line by reducing your numbers of officers. And so I commend to you the approach that says we should work more collaboratively on IT. We should explore other areas for collaboration um, and look at all those things where actually no policing purpose is being served. Um, and yet we have what is called rather disparagingly back office. And I, and I kind of, I'm not going to get into front line, front office, middle office and back office, uh, having seen... Uh, Having seen what came of uh, Sir Dennis's brave attempt to do so a few weeks ago, I, I think we should, probably, we should probably leave that well alone. It reminds me of the Home Affairs Select Committee in 1995. They were talking about organised crime, and they pondered over this in the way of uh, the, the sort of parliament of the 90s and said that organised crime is, uh, is rather more easy to, uh, to recognise than to define. And after this sort of these grandees of the House of Commons deliberating for months and months and months, they, they came to the conclusion that if it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, and waddles like a duck, the chances are it is a duck. But, but that's as far as they got. And I think the same is true of the front line. Kind of we, we know what we mean, police officers and police staff who, who work on the front line and, and shouldn't dwell too much on, on defining it. But what we should do is look at those things that sit in support of policing whether that's processing fixed penalty notices, whether it's some of the functions that support custody, whether it's uh, payroll, some of the transactional HR, finance, pensions, etc., etc., And it's my contention that we should look simultaneously both to nationalise and to outsource those things to whoever can provide them at the most economic cost. And perhaps again, in, uh, in question and answer, we, we might go back on, on some of those points. Um, I think my final 
reflection, I guess, would just be to talk about something that I keep hearing about and don't, uh, don't fully understand, uh, which is what people call transformational change. I spend a lot of time with, uh, with people coming to see me from the commercial sector, management consultants, etc., and they tell me that transformation is, uh, is, is the name of the game and we should all be doing it. Uh, they all seem to have a slightly, uh, a slightly different uh, definition of what transformational change means. But I think that um, it is certainly a time now, and I saw Jan's, uh, Jan's heading for her presentation, which is about, you know, don't, don't waste a good recession, that the, the fact is that we need to find ways uh, collectively as a service to, to think differently, behave differently, to buy differently, and to provide service differently, uh, and to understand what we cost differently. Otherwise, we will just simply see more and more cuts coming from the front line. And, um, and the challenge, I guess, is to work together to do that and to step aside from some of the things that threaten to preoccupy us and divide us moving forward. Um, things like, for example, Windsor, things like, for example, the Nehru Review and the creation of a professional institute for policing, things like the uh, turbulence that will surround police and crime commissioners and the strategic policing requirement, um, and things like the legislative programme that uh, will sit around the creation of a national crime agency. Uh, it's just too important for that. Um, there are too many good people in policing, and what we shouldn't forget is that what we're all here around is providing a service to, uh, to vulnerable people in communities, and uh, I think we need to think radically, um, think carefully, and work purposefully towards improving the service, or at least maintaining the service that we provide to them, in a very, very difficult and austere financial climate. Um, I was going to say something about uh, the number of uh, Federation officials in the room, uh, I just, just because I had it pointed out to me by uh, Rob Garnham. He was sitting next to me in, uh, in, in the, uh, the meeting that I've just been at. Um, and, uh, and, and it just prompted, I mean, it's, it's not a, a directly critical comment. Safe to say that, uh, you know, I think we, we who are at the the kind of national level and at the representative level in policing need to start and lead by example in the way that uh, in the way that we approach this. Um, I think you know I'd, I'd question, for example, why are 31 of you at a conference like this hearing all the people speak for, for a fee that you'll be able to hear for free at the Fed conference in a month's time? Um, I think you know, for example, how many of you travelled first class to get here? I was surprised yesterday to be at an event uh, and hear that the contingent from a a force near to my home had travelled down by first class. When the Home Secretary doesn't class, travel first class anymore, uh, I don't travel first class anymore, um, I make those two slightly provocative points simply to say that you could come to a conference like this, there can be a lot of hand-wringing and we can all agree it's somebody else's problem and somebody else's behaviour that, uh, that will impact on this and I think it's our problem and our behaviour so we should get on and do something about it. Uh, happy to take questions. Thank you.